portfolios. They're really fun to look at, to get inspired or just steal like an artist. So today I just wanted to kind of go over some really dope portfolios that I kind of source in the community and uh, let's just, let's just see what they've been cooking. So without further ado, let's hop into the first portfolio. But before that, as per usual, do not forget to check out the everything pack. It's the first link in the description down below where you basically all my products, all custom made products by me on my self I page right now, literally all of them on one purchase, plus all future products for free, no matter the price forever. All right, so the first before they're reviewing today is by a designer known as Igor Raphael. And is we're looking at his G fee visual identity project for the record, Igor Raphael, what a cool name. First thing that we're kind of hit on with is his really cool style frames. We got the header. We got five or so style frames on the bottom, even some in motion, which is just really nice to see, honestly. Like when I'm actually greeted with a portfolio that actually sees, I see some kind of like visual candy in the beginning. I just, I just get real happy. I know I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna look at something pretty decent. As I keep scrolling down, we see some of the sketches and the tests for the development. And we just got like the whole cape work. This guy is like some, this guy is the real deal. And then we're just scrolling down. We got some more sort of like like, uh, how do you say these like UI elements in motion that they kind of just put anywhere and it kind of makes the frame feel like it's uh, moving, which is a really nice little subtle thing you can do, especially if you're like a, a, an art director, you want to like sort of outsource that from someone and like get that done and you're just not a motion designer. These are really cool little quick little elements you can definitely do. I'm scrolling down, we got team. Oh, Igor Raphael. He's just a career director. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Hey, that's still, that's still work. It's his vision, but he has a team that does a lot of cool stuff, a type. Oh my God, character design, scene, type, all that. Oh, shout out all these guys. Oh, so it seems Igor was the creative director and the motion animator and the 3D. Okay, so he's still a jack of all trades, master of a lot. So that's great. When people do motion, some people really think that you have to kind of move the entire frame or move like 80% of the frame for it to feel like it's in motion and, and sort of like move away from the actual stylization point of it. Right, with this frame here, all that's really happening is you get this sort of like zoom in framed like a uh, dolly camera kind of zooming out a little bit. Then of course you have like in the offline, these are just three conches that are happening. I don't know if they're like words or anything like that or just like uh, random kanji symbols, but just that's moving alone. And then you got a little bit of tight moving on the bottom right or the top right and those UI elements there as well. It's not a lot being moved. And this is not to take away from anyone, but realistically, it's such a simplistic approach that takes taste, skill, and etc. to actually accomplish correctly. But at the same time, it's a really fun thing to kind of think and narrate when you're looking at doing emotion design because it doesn't have to be everything. If you broke the project down in its simplest form, you have some really good animation alongside with the illustration. So you kind of go hand in hand and make it feel like the cape is moving and such. Really nice typography. And of course, those UI elements just to kind of put a little bit of motion in the frame so you don't have to move everything around. Uh, and this really nice color scheme in 3D scenes and it just felt really cohesive. Congrats, because this is a sick portfolio. The whole portfolio is also kind of cool. I, I gave it a little look, if you guys want to see too. Like the guy's just cracked. Like, look at that. Look at this. All right, so the next before that we have here is Alberto into his exploration of apparel design. We're gonna be all over the place. We did apparel, we're gonna do, we did motion illustration, we did, we're gonna do some logos, we're gonna do a lot of cool stuff and hopefully it's just a fun expression of art. We're gonna look at his essentials Gritty? Gritty. Gritty? Like, like gritty? Like. Uh, hmm. I'm looking at some like, oh, the Essentials program, I'm guessing, is more like the base model, very clean cut, etc. which it looks really, really nice. I'm not gonna lie, even like the matching. Ooh. Hey, you thought about that. I really enjoy the style frames here, like the black background, obviously the black shirt, and it goes cream, etc. blah, 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 blah. But however, it met, it, the, the, the three photos in between all kind of have this really nice, cohesive color scheme together it, that just feels very pretty very thoughtful and just like a that's just hot i'm not gonna lie as an aspiring art director i can see a lot of these photos as well kind of i might just you know you know took you know take my lookbook you know for my next campaign but it's really dope to kind of dive into things like this like this is one of those opportunities that you like you get to see the behind the scenes or the composition of like what makes a really good photo and what makes a sort of cohesive branding and i hope this launch and everything just went really really well so if we were to hop into his free ideology campaign we got this gritty gritty i i, I want to say this so i'm so so bad with names but this one just hurts me on my soul however this time we have a more sort of stylized approach if we're going to keep on scrolling down here we of course get that simple lookbook feeling okay here we go it's really fun when people use something as simple as how do you say like a different way to uh, address photography except for just taking a photo of something even just using like a polaroid just to kind of capture the frame itself and then even put that 
Polaroid on top of like a graphic and have these stacked Polaroids just adds a vibe to it that's just one of those simple narrative things that you can use for any campaign. Keep on going down. Oh, I like your UI for this. I can already tell this is expensive. When you when you go to a site and the UI looks like all that fine small print and like the price is like the last line really, really tiny. Okay, we're gonna go to the essentials. Oh, I'm getting into like the whole ideas of trims and, and all the good stuff of apparel. So uh, I can respect it, but I knew it. I'm sure all the streetwear people are obviously taking some notes on this project, including myself, just about how kind of set up some of these stages and some of these uh, lookbook ideas you kind of had there. I mean, uh, yeah, like this is tough. It's tough. So let's go ahead and take a dive into esports with Luis Andre's portfolio of OG esports. First things first, I'm enjoying again that header. When the header's in motion, you got a little bit of style frames in the bottom, a very clean way to approach a nice portfolio project. We go down, we get some inspiration mood boards. We got a lot of, uh, it looks like iridescent, a lot of glows, a lot of shines, maybe a lot of, uh, definitely glows is what I'm what I'm feeling the most in this kind of, this frame in here. But if I kind of keep going down, I see some glows. Oh, what I also like is the actual uh, photography. Just, I'm gonna talk about photography a lot. Again, I'm in my, my art director phase, okay? So I'm doing a lot of like, you know, breaking things down of, from music to art to, to the photography, things of that sort. But it's really cool. So if you're even in esports or if you're in the sports world res regardless, you got you got one of these you know what i mean it's real boring like really boring so it's really fun to kind of see these like more expressionate characteristic and kind of almost see like the personalities of the players themselves within the frame it's just a really fun way to kind of just you know again share more personable intimate approach without like you know the basic bulls bs Eh? I will say that I also really enjoy the fact that the OG Esports logo looks like it's to be a diamond of some sort, and you kind of illustrated that in a more different way. There's the same sense is that the angles and the 45 degree angles is pretty much the approach that is still similar enough for it to feel cohesive with the logo, which is a really nice jab without making it be so literal. <laughs> okay, this is a really fun frame too. Again, everybody's character is being portrayed in this. It's just really cool. It's just a really fun narrative. Really awesome. Also, just take off of the, the simplicity of just a good typography, good color, simple treatment, and then good photography. It, that's all you really need to kind of have a successful campaign. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is sick, Aunt, uh, Luis. This is really sick. I'm definitely kind of in the mood to stay in the, the esports realm. So I'm going to go to Alex K's project. And we're going to go to Crew Esports, this most, most latest one. Now, this is esports again. And of course, we start off with the header with some really cool motion design stuff here as well. We have Rocket League kind of going on. We have this really cool dark atmosphere. It meets like this pinkish tone, this really cool offset white that has a little bit of blue hue in it really cool little ui sort of uh inspired heavily text type texture inspired surroundings and outer borders but i really enjoy the actual consistency of these frames and i also appreciate the the easiness of this is something called breaking the repetition repetition is the word i want to say so you can see how the car the car itself can always be sort of placed in this left justified or left facing angle and then every single time you see a post from crew the car is facing one way but the just the simplicity i want to kind of put my you know thumb on this one the just the simplicity of turning the car around into a different angle itself just breaks the repetition and gives the audience something more exciting or something that feels refreshed and new just by even moving some pictures on the one side to another side or even taking the type texture and flipping it will just really help that idea and just really really good eye to know that because a lot of people don't do that and yeah the overall product is just, it's really fun it just has that fun atmosphere very characteristic very uh, uh how do you say like grim post rest feeling but it's really cool because you have alex a different approach or a different success in my opinion than andreas and it's just really fun because it's just one of those things that you can realize that when you put two great minds together, you can create something even more cooler and why collaborations is so popular thing to do, of course, is to bring more artists in because your success is the idea of breaking your repetition. You have this really successful idea of texture where Andreas is really, uh, really nice in like typography kind of realm and also like the glow and photo treatment kind of realm. So it's, it's really fun to share those different narratives because it's, it's just important to know that you don't have to be good at everything. That's kind of my narrative for this, this, this part of the video. Now, I feel like breaking the tempo a little bit from the eSports, moving into logo designs for a second, and we have Queso's Logo Volume 1 Portfolio. Logo Folio, I, lo I love that word. What a fun word. Nerd Specs, I'm guessing nice computer. Like, I, I love logos for one reason and one reason only. I can't think like this. Like, I might be good at typography and like putting things together in, in that realm and probably picking like a good font choice, which is sometimes all you need. But when it comes to like taking simplicity and then making it so transparently obvious, yet original, yet unique, it was is a practice that is just it's almost like a brain training food thing when you get to look at someone's portfolio and be a uh, local portfolio in specific and be like okay you 
you're, you're goaded for sure. Even does typography like hand work afterlife. That is such a pretty like ink drop approach. It's really nice there. I'm not gonna lie. Just like scrolling through. Yeah, these are just some successful dope portfolio pieces that just feels just dope, right? Like the more I scroll, the more I really, really enjoy what's happening here. This this flux flux logo, which it looks like there's some kind of like ninja star in the background, man. That's so that's so dope. I can, I can read the word flux pretty quickly too, which is really nice. Even all the way down to this, this Austin logo. I'm sure this is more of a personal logo for some kind of personal brand where his name is Austin. But like even these little two, very candidly, like the star treatments of like uh, Y2KS stars, or they always work. But the fact is, it looks really good here, and the way you extended some of these serifs to connect each other, really, really, really fun. So yeah, I gotta give my love to logo artists because this is not easy for me, and I know I'll be knocking on people's doors sometimes for logos because. Uh, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> now, of course, naturally, I want to stay on logo. So we have Robin Schwartz portfolio here, and it looks to be first off the site, like moving around. It's really pretty. I'm Robin UX UI design. Look out! Look at that. That's so sick. Let's go ahead and go to product so for a second here, right? And the first one that pops into me is the the Pixel Soda. So this use seems to be a UX design product slash research, which which to me, I'm guessing he's like doing product design, like the actual look of the pixel soda cans, I guess. The actual art itself looks to be these really fun, like bigger shapes of the flavor in a pixel format. They very like sort of uh, cool little subtext pixel mono typeface of some sort, which is really, really cool as well. All the way down to what the even logo looks like. We have the, this PXL that's very futuristic, very Y2K inspired as well. But this time around, for some reason, it feels Y2K, but in a realm of like, like cyberpunk, like oddly enough, for some reason, it feels almost out of touch of this reality into to a different realm which is really successful but at the same time maybe in a way of like product research if it's like the perfect branding for today's time is my only question i would have if i had to actually challenge this you look at the the actual banner design these some of these posters even down to this truck it just feels oddly like hack loading like come on right there's honestly a very strong genuine presence to the actual brand and, and the clarity is very much so there as well but yeah the only sort of context i would say is is this branding direction acceptable yet yet just because or is it is it one of those novelties where people will just jump on to it like a j just because it's cool right like i don't know it's it's a really fun approach for sure giving it a quick scroll too i see this black belt text which just looks or tax oh black belt tax okay we have a sort of like kanji inspired black belt stuff oh we got a little thing here we got plus minus for tax karate ring karate belt equals tax Okay, black belt tax. I see. One of the things I notice about this logo, and I don't know, I don't know why I just chose to choose you as like the the guy I'm like critiquing a little harder. But I wonder, and I could be wrong here, but I wonder if this split here, at this smaller scale, this gap, in order to actually maintain this plus and minus theory to have minus on one side, plus on another side, maybe it doesn't need to be as vividly obvious as this. Where at this scale, that little gap just feels like a mistake rather than like a purposeful thing to actually happen because if you can still illustrate plus and minus and have this really small slither be like really thick and also just turn it to also match the sort of curves or narratives of the actual little kanji house piece in the middle the black belt portion of it right again the way you're thinking about this i would have never yeah nah nope <laughs> All right, so the next portfolio that we're looking at is by Finn. Now, the reason why I wanted to show this portfolio is I saw this literal thumbnail and I was like, I can already tell it's gonna be pretty cool because of the simplicities of how he's putting these two things together. So if I click on this, I have yet to see it. So I wonder what it is. Movie posters, type design, all that good stuff. Okay. Oh, honestly, I love the texture. It's like an eye candy thing for me for sure. Especially on this guy here, like the, the black and white vibes, the sort of like whatever this called, like the half tone texture, the back down here, all the way down to even kind of keeping that sort of contrast, that healthy contrast and that healthy continuity of like the, the actual typeface in the foreground here. It just feels like a really successful, thoughtful, appreciative idea. Even down here too, like honestly, the type, the texture, I, uh, I have yet to use this texture purposefully in a campaign ever. And it's so simple. It's actually so simple that I could I could drag a photo in here. Then we're gonna go to our color pick on the left hand side. It's gonna have a primary color as yellow. That's the, the which is gonna be the highlight color for the record. And then the background color I'm gonna make like a darker yellow. So I'm gonna make it yellow or like orange. Then I'm gonna combine these layers together. Control Alt Shift and E to merge all the layers together. Head over to Filter, Filter Gallery. Your primary and secondary colors. I just realized it's flipped. Dark color goes in the foreground. 
bright color goes in the background now go to filter color gallery sketch half tone pattern and now we got our nice little contrast happening here but this time all you got to do is take the pattern dots you can use dots so if you zoom in a little bit you'll see some little dots in there a little difficult i would say from like this distance for sure but also at the same time there's lines and then there's circles which you use a lot of the circles if i press ok i can take this put some contrast on this and there i go i got some simple little half tones in there it's so simple yet when you put it together with the right color schemes and right contrast it just makes for like a really solid genuinely solid typography or excuse me texture choice that just cannot be ignored like look just to further prove my point i i, I took two seconds to put this together it's a terrible photo but just think if it's like a really cool photo in the background I you know however then of course to go back and keep the actual spotlight on fan there's some just genuine successes of how you actually navigate a typography as simple as just doing something like this where you kind of center it around the paragraph text to just be something different type texture is so powerful if you haven't like really learned how to figure out what makes type texture successful look at some of these things it, it could be as simple as grouping things together in a way that just uh, still adds that grid narrative that grid aspect of it but at the same time just some really really dope success and I, it's really cool that i can just talk about something as simple as this as a success because it is more easier more capable to even get to this direction which is really fun so finn this is a w but with that that is the end of the video here today so hopefully you guys just had some fun looking over some really cool projects with me one of the things i definitely hope is that you guys were able to look at something get inspired by something try it yourself and then make a nice cool portfolio piece but with that all the actual points you see in today's video here today will be in the description down below and as always don't forget to leave a like comment subscribe all that good stuff if you guys like these portfolio reviews i haven't done them in almost like a year but if you enjoy it let me know and i'll definitely do some more but with that sense of hq out you gotta keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking proud guys later much love peace enjoy your day